After studying this module, you will be able to know about Frankfurt's plane, what is the horizontal plane of the skull, various linear measurements of the cranium and the measurement of face and capacity of the skull. To introduce you the topic, it has been some time past when anthropologists in Germany have been commendably endeavoring to come to a common agreement among themselves as to a technique of measuring skulls which could be commonly or one can say universally adopted. In order to attain this purpose, a craniometric conference at the international level was held at Munich in 1877 and afterwards in Berlin in the year 1880. The outcome of those deliberations uh, was a scheme drawn up by Professor Coleman, Yanke and Virko which was submitted for consideration to the 13th General Congress of the German Anthropological Society held at Frankfurt on Main in 1882. The scheme was adopted and designated the Frankfurt Agreement of which the subsequent is a more or less exact translation. The Frankfurt Plane or common verbatim Frankfurt Plane, both spellings are widely used and the term is interred as Frankfurt Horizontal Plane in several medical dictionaries. Even though Frankfurt is the modern standard spelling of the city for which it is named was established at the international level meet of World Congress of Anthropology in Frankfurt and Main, Germany in 1884 and ruled as the anatomical position of the human skull in various fields of science. It was agreed upon that a plane passing from end to end the inferior margin of the left orbit, the point called a left tubercle and the upper margin of each ear canal or external auditory meatus, a place called the porion was utmost nearly parallel to the surface of the earth and also it was found close to the position the head is generally carried in the living subject. The plane is also titled as auriculo orbital plane, the horizontal plane of the skull. In the craniometric conference which was held at the Munich and Berlin, the German horizontal plane a definition was accepted as that plane which is determined by two straight lines one on either side of the skull joining the lowest points present on the inferior margins of the orbits and the points that are present over the upper margins of the bony auditory meatus that is practically situated perpendicularly above their centers. In this context, the German horizontal plane is used to measure the direct length of the cranium along with the height and the maximum breadth too. Not only this, but the breadth of the forehead and likewise the various other cranial measurements are taken like the angle of inclination of the foramen magnum and the profile angle of the human face and quite a lot of other facial measurements to be computed and are described later on. These craniometric conferences mentioned at that time, they had also come to conclusion and decided to take a number of other measurements which are actually dependent on the horizontal plane of the skull. So that various and valuable older dimensions which have not been made in relation to our horizontal plane and therefore not exactly as good as it we not renders valueless. Further what is more for the significant reason that in case of a broken skull in which the facial region is needed as is commonly the case among the maximum vital uh, primeval skulls a precise establishment of the German horizontal plane is extremely difficult and let us say next to impossible. In these cases, it is definitely desirable to handpick fixed anatomical points already present on the skull as a starting points intended for the principal measurements in place of making uncertain subjective evaluation of the probable condition of the plane and of the measurements in relation to it. It is actually by the use of these points that it becomes possible to take measurements taken minus reference to the horizontal plane accord with those made reference to that plane. The requirement for auxiliary measurements free of the German horizontal plane was specifically recognized by both craniometric conferences for determining the length of the skull. In order to measure the exact height of the skull, the similar need is very obvious. Similarly, an auxiliary measurement which however position at 
some distance from the base of the skull is often indispensable to define the breadth of the cranium. The auxiliary measurements of length have already been determined upon in both conferences. They are the maximum length and that length is the, the anterior measuring point of which is positioned in the center of a straight line joining the epicenter of the frontal eminences. This former length measurement appears to be essential for equating the length of the skull proper of the anthropoidea with the man. Both these lengths are measured with the help of calipers. In the subsequent list, the terms of the most significant measurement of the skull are produced, which will help in understanding explanation of procedures of ascertaining each. Now let us see the linear measurement of the cranium. The horizontal lathe from the middle point between superciliary ridges on the glabella to the maximum protruding point at the back of the cranium measured parallel to the horizontal plane of the skull with the help of the sliding compass. This measurement of length was also decided upon at the conference in Bern. In situations where it is found that the glabella is greatly advanced, it is desired when imaginable to measure its thickness also. The maximum length from the midpoint in the middle of the arcus superciliaris to the most bulbous point on the back of the head, this is the maximum length. It is also measured with the help of calipers, that too without reference to the horizontal plane. Intertuberal length, it is from the middle point in between the two frontal eminences to the most protruding point present at the back of the head without reference to the horizontal plane and is measured with the calipers. The intertuberal length in brachycephalic skulls with good rounded foreheads coincides very nearly with the maximum and horizontal lengths. Maximum breadth, this is measured perpendicularly to the median plane with the help of the sliding calipers or compass where it is only not on the mastoid process or on the posterior temporal ridges. The points of measurement must lie on the same horizontal plane. The auricular breadth of virtue, it is the distance between the two upper borders of the auditory meatus. Then minimum frontal breadth, it is the shortest space found between the frontal ridges near their base, which is measured by the sliding compass or the calipers. Height, the so called total height of virtue is actually the measurement from the very center of the anterior border of part known as the foramen magnum to the parietal curve. Its measurement is done vertically to the horizontal plane with the help of calipers. The variance found in the height of the anterior and posterior borders of the foramen magnum will thus be indicated uh, through which the Bayer height is uh, evaluated. Auxiliary height, in case where the skull is broken uh, as previously mentioned, where the facial position is not good enough, the horizontal plane cannot be determined. As an auxiliary height which approaches very nearly to the total height, the height on or after the center of the anterior border of the foramen magnum to the point at which the sagittal and coronal sutures come across that is the bragma or broca. They should be measured by the means of the calipers. Then the ear height from the point that is the upper border of the auditory meatus to the point of the vertex of the head positioned perpendicularly above it. This is measured straight up in relation to the horizontal plane of the skull. Then auxiliary ear height, it is from the same starting point to the highest point of the parietal curve about 2 to 3 centimeters behind the coronal suture. Then length of the base of the skull, the distance from the middle of the anterior border of the foramen magnum to the middle of the nasofrontal suture. Length of the basilar portion, it is the sphenooccipital suture. The greatest length and breadth of the foramen magnum is measured in the median plane and transversely to it. Breadth of the skull base, this is the distance between the summits of the mastoid processes, distance between the two most prominent points on the outer surface of the mastoid process. Then horizontal circumference of the skull is measured with the steel tape placed immediately above the superciliary ridges and over the most prominent point on the back of the head. Sagittal circumference of the skull, it is measured from the nasofrontal suture 
to the posterior border of the foramen magnum along the sagittal suture. In vertical transverse circumference of the skull, it is measured from the upper border of the one auditory meatus to that of the other perpendicularly to the horizontal plane 2 to 3 centimeters behind the coronal suture. Then let us see the measurement of the face. The breadth of the face or the virtues, the distance between two jugo maxillary sutures. The measurement must be made from the under and interior point of the one suture to the corresponding point of the other. The breadth of the face of one holder that is the distance between the two inner angles of malar bones. The distance between two points situated vertically below the apices of the inner angles of the malars on their under borders. Then by zygomatic breadth, the greatest distance of the zygomatic arches from one another. The interorbital breadth, it is the minimum distance between the inner border of the entrance of the orbital cavities. Then height of the face. It is the distance from the middle of the frontonasal suture to the middle of the under border of the mandible. Then the upper or the middle face height from the middle of the frontonasal suture to the middle of the alveolar border of the upper jaw between the central incisor tooth. Height of nose. This is the distance from the middle of the frontonasal suture to the middle of the upper surface of the nasal spine that is to the lowest border of the piriform opening. Then maximum breadth of the nasal cavity, it is the distance measured horizontally. Then maximum breadth of the entrance of the orbital cavity, from the center of the median border of the orbital cavity to its lateral border, that is the clear space between the two borders of the orbital cavity. Maximum horizontal breadth of the entrance of the orbital cavity, this is measured parallel to the horizontal plane, otherwise analogous to the breadth of the entrance of the orbital cavity. Maximum height of the orbital cavity is measured vertically to the greatest breadth between the upper and lower borders. Then vertical height of the orbital cavity, it is measured vertically to horizontal breadth of the entrance of the orbital cavity of Virchow, otherwise analogous to the height of the orbital cavity. Length of the palate, it is measured from the point of the palatal spine to the inner lamina of the alveolar border between the central incisor teeth. Then middle palatal breadth, it is measured between the inner alveolar walls opposite the second molar teeth. Then posterior palatal breadth, it is measured at the posterior ends of the palate that is between the inner alveolar borders. Then length of the profile of the face that is the Colman's facial length, it is actually measured from the most prominent point of the center of the outer alveolar border of the upper jaw to the anterior border of the foramen magnum in the median plane. Then profile angle, it is the angle which the profile line makes with the horizontal plane. The measurement of other angles of the face and cranial still remains to be determined. Coming on to the measurement of the capacity of a skull. The capacity of the skull is measured with short in fragile skulls with millet seed and the method to be followed remains for future uh, consideration. The skull indices like cephalic index that is the let and uh, breadth index. Uh, length and breadth divided by 100 uh, and according to this they can be categorized into uh, four types the dolicocephalic or the long skulls they have got the cephalic index below 75 then the mesocephalic they are the having cephalic index from 75.1 to 79.9 then the brachycephalic or the short skull from 80 to 85 then the hyper brachycephalic that is the cephalic index 85.1 and over. Then there is a length and height index that is the again height divided by length into 100. On the basis of this there can be three types of skull, comma cephalic that is the flat skull the 75 and under, the orthocephalic that is from 70.1 to 75 and the hypsy cephalic that is the high skull that is 75.1 and over. Then there is a profile angle. The inclination of the profile line to the horizontal plane is classified again under three uh, divisions, the prognathos, mesognathos and the hyperorthonathos. Prognathos when the angle is 82 degrees and under, the mesognathos when the angle is 83 degrees to 90 degrees and then hyperorthonathos when the angle is 91 degrees and above. Then the procedure for obtaining Frankfurt's mandibular plane angle. In actual practice, on pupil, the Frankfurt's mandibular plane angle can be obtained by means of the following method. 
the finger and thumb of the right hand are extended palm down the fingers are kept together while the thumb extends from the palm of the hand at approximately 90 degree angle from the fingers the thumb is placed in the area at subnasion on the person and nation or the chin will rest in the angle of the hand formed by the thumb and palm a slight upward pressure of the hand with the fingers extended under the lower border of the mandible to gonion will clearly outline the lower border with the left hand place a rule lightly against the patient's face connecting orbital and trageon has the rule extend posteriorly beyond trageon at least 6 to 8 inches now place other rule along the line formed by the palm and upper border of the index finger with the lower border of the mandible the frankfurt's mandibular plane angle will be formed at the intersection of two rules to summarize the topic the frankfurt plane or the common verbatim frankfurt plane was established at the world congress on anthropology in frankfurt germany in 1884 and is used as the anatomical position of the human skull in various fields of sciences breadth of face is the distance between two jugo maxillary sutures height of the face is the distance between middle of the frontonasal suture to the middle of the under border of the mandible the profile angle is the angle which the profile line makes with the horizontal plane and the capacity of the skull is measured with short or in fragile skulls with seed